And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome in once again to O'Neill's Grill for our weekly fan and press luncheon with JMU football coach Mike Houston. The Dukes coming off a 43-20 win at home against the Delaware Blue Hens on Saturday. We're going to talk about that as well as the upcoming game against the tribe of Woyman Mary. Good afternoon once again, everyone. I'm Kurt Dudley, and uh, we'll have Coach Houston here in just a moment. Uh, the Dukes, in their victory over Delaware, accrued 607 yards of total offense. That was the most in the history of the series. And this meeting was number 24 between the Dukes and the Blue Hens. And JMU's 10th victory in the series, and it marked only the third time in the series that Madison won back-to-back -back games in the series against Delaware. With that, the uh, pollsters left the Dukes at number 7 on the Stats FCS poll and at number 6 on the coaches poll this week. JMU one of four teams this week, still in the top 25 on both those polls. William & Mary is one that dropped out because the Tribe did uh, lose once again this weekend. Their second straight defeat, it was 20 to 12 at New Hampshire. Very poor weather conditions up at uh, Durham this weekend. So I'm sure Coach uh, Houston will talk about that a little bit. Uh, something doesn't quite add up when they had a running back that rushed for 168 yards on 25 carries and they only, square, uh, they only scored 12 points. That was Kendall Anderson and uh, dropped them to 2-3 and three overall and 0-2 oh in the CAA. A couple of team notes. Uh, the Dukes uh, racked up 32 more first downs on Saturday. That brings them to 142 on the season. I mention that because they still lead the nation in that category. Uh, they're second in scoring, uh, now down to 47.6 points per game, and second nationally in rushing yards at 342. JMU is also fourth in total offense and third down conversions. And in the Dukes, four games against FCS foes. So if you just scratch the North Carolina game, and those, those four games, they've had at least two running backs or two rushers to uh, eclipse 100 yards in a ball game. Defensively, JMU 10th in interceptions. They have seven, and uh, all of last year came away with only 11 interceptions, so certainly on pace to break that. And another note is that uh, this defense starting to emerge somewhat as currently ranked 17th in third down defense at 31.6 at one point against Delaware, one for nine on Saturday, finishing up four for 12. Uh, Bob Trott, the defensive coordinator, uh, putting things together there. Uh, Khalid Abdullah had another great game. He is at uh, the top of the FCS rushing, rushing charts in cumulative yardage at 603. That's an average of 120.6 per game, which ranks second in the CAA. And Brian Shore, the Duke's junior quarterback, is this week's co-offensive player of the week in the Colonial. He also received some national honorable mention recognition. He had 312 yards of total offense. Looking ahead to this coming weekend against the Tribe of William & Mary, the Dukes lead this series 21-17. to And the coverage on the Sprint Broadcast Network, 2.30 pregame show, ASN will be there also for television coverage. And you can also uh, listen to the network broadcast online through Matazone's audio as well as WSVA online. And uh, Dave Thomas and Clint Estes with the call this week. And you can join yours truly and Adam Coolball for the video coverage on Matazone HD Sportsnet. A couple of other events coming up this weekend on Matazone is Friday night, at JMU Volleyball hosting UNC Wilmington. That is 7 o'clock Friday. That's a video production and then audio on Sunday against the College of Charleston. One other thing before we turn it over to Coach Houston is uh, that this is also Duke Club Week. This is a new, a new event for the Duke Club. Uh, typically in the past, they've had a Duke Club weekend. In fact, this game uh, with the Dukes and William & Mary is sponsored by the Duke Club. The entire season brought to you by CarMax, but the Duke Club on this particular game, and normally they would have a Duke Club weekend or a Duke Club game, but now they're on a campaign, kind of an educational campaign to uh, help the JMU Nation and those that want to become a part of the JMU Nation understand a little bit more about the great work that the Duke Club is doing to help raise funds to support the uh, budget at JMU athletically. So uh, there is certainly more information about that on jmusports.com as well as jmudukeclub.com. So thank you for your time, and we're again glad that you're here at O'Neill's. We're going to bring in Coach Houston to talk about the Dukes' win over Delaware and their upcoming game against William & Mary, as well as maybe a few other things he may have on his agenda today. Coach?
Good afternoon. Thank everybody for coming out again, and uh, thanks again to uh, O'Neill's for hosting our luncheon this week. Happy belated birthday to Mo, wherever she is in the building. So uh, she celebrated last week, and uh, she's not got to see her. So, uh, and uh, happy Duke Club week. I want to thank uh, all of our Duke Club members for their support of JMU Athletics and uh, providing the, the uh, financial support for our scholarships for our athletes at JMU and certainly the Duke Club is uh, a vital part and, and really the key to, uh, to allowing us to be able to, to have the athletes that we have at James Madison University. So uh, great parent weekend this past weekend, perfect weather on Saturday afternoon which was in question most of the week but uh, turned out just fine and had uh, really an outstanding crowd uh, for the game Saturday against Delaware with uh, just over 25,000 in attendance. I think the third largest uh, uh, attendance, uh, home attendance in JMU history. So uh, just a great day for a, a fantastic college football game. And, uh, you know, Delaware came into the game uh, playing very well, uh, quality opponent, uh, and, uh, and, and they were everything we thought they would be uh, when everything kicked off. But uh, obviously I am extremely pleased with the way our team played Saturday. I thought that uh, we, uh, you know, we were ready to play. We had a great week of practice all week. I thought that culminated with the way our team came out on Saturday, and uh, it, and it was it was tough going there in the first quarter, which really I expected throughout most of the game. But uh, you know, fortunately, we were able to get uh, you know a couple of stops there on defense in the second quarter, and our, our offense uh, was able to take control of the ball game. Uh, with the way they drove the ball in the second and third quarters and uh, able to build a, a pretty good lead going into the fourth uh, and able to uh, come out with uh, a really a quality CAA win over a, uh, over a quality opponent. So uh, really pleased with, uh, with this past weekend. So, and that put us in, you know, in good shape going into this weekend. Uh, obviously, uh, another uh, top opponent in the CAA with William & Mary. Uh, you know, a, a, a quality program that uh, beat, uh, beat JMU at William & Mary last year in a very tough loss uh, for our program. And uh, the bulk of that roster is back. And uh, I think seven returning all-conference players on offense, uh, uh, returning uh, six defensive starters from last year. Uh, a lot of guys on special teams that were quality players last year. So obviously a very talented roster. Uh, I have no doubt that we will get their very best this Saturday in a game that, uh, you know, pitted between uh, two in-state rivals uh, that will be a, a, a very hard-fought game. So uh, I expect that, uh, you know, we will be challenged both sides of the football, and I think we will be greatly challenged on special teams. And uh, I think that we will need to play uh, probably our best game of the year this Saturday in order to have a chance to uh, get another win in the CAA. So all that being said, Questions from the media about last week or this coming week? Well, I mean, first off, I've known Donnie for a long time uh, and uh, n knew he had great success as the head coach at uh, UT Chattanooga. He had great success as the receivers coach at East Carolina University. And, uh, and, and just my comfort with him is what kind of started the conversations. And then uh, as the more we talked, and I talked with him about the philosophy of kind of what I thought we could be here and what I wanted to be here uh, in, a, in a guy that's transitioning from the triple option back to the spread. Uh, and, you know, listening to him, uh, I felt like he had the same core values in, uh, in how to build this offense that I had. Uh, and it's really, it's, it's come together probably as good as I could have hoped for. Because uh, I think he's brought, he's brought some aspects of the air raid, which he was in at East Carolina, with him. I think we've uh, worked in some aspects from Virginia Tech, from uh, Coach Steinspring. And I think we've worked in some aspects that I just had is just, you know, this is what I want to be, uh, you know, offensively here. And I, think, I just think our offensive staff has done a, a really a great job of, of bringing all those ideas together. And, and producing what we've produced so far this year. Think it would come together as fast as, as it has? I'd hoped. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you, I knew that we had some quality players coming back, uh, and I knew that we had certainly some strengths because of athleticism those players possessed. Uh, did I think that it would 
come together quite the way it has. I don't know, but uh, I think that that goes back to, uh, again, our kids have bought in. Our kids are doing what they're coached to do. Uh, I think our coaches are doing a great job, and I think it's just that whole everybody committed to the common cause kind of deal that's resulted in, you know, things transitioning as fast as they have. Hey, Coach, Dave Thomas from uh, ESPN Harrisonburg and JMU Sprint Broadcast Network. Defense has really started to play well, really the second half of Maine up through, uh, through Delaware. Andrew Anchor is becoming a little more yeah. visible. Have you changed anything to get him in that position, or is he just facing – Teams that are really keying on him. The biggest thing Andrew's doing is he's actually playing within the defense now. I mean, I think that he struggled with some things early on, uh, and I thought we had, you know, had some mental breakdowns in some games, some missed assignments. Uh, I thought he played his best game of the year thus far this past weekend. I think the big thing was he didn't have blown assignments, and he played very, very hard. And I think that's that's really the thing with all of them uh, is that we had fewer mistakes this past weekend uh, throughout the bulk of the game uh, than we've had in previous weekends. And I think the more and more that the guys can eliminate those mental mistakes and play within the scheme, you know, for, and it wasn't he was doing it intentionally, but, uh, you know, he, I, I, thought, I thought he played his cleanest game from that standpoint this past weekend. And, you know, I've reinforced him this week. Lo and behold, all those plays that he wasn't making against North Carolina, he made against Delaware, you know, with the same, you know, same kind of uh, calls there. So uh, I think that our defense is playing better. I think that they're practicing better. Uh, I hope that that trend continues. I would like to see us play better this Saturday than we did last Saturday because I was, uh, was kind of ticked at a couple of things there in the fourth quarter where we misfit a couple of runs and, and gave up some things we shouldn't have. But uh, you know, before that, I thought that we'd played a real, a real good ball game Saturday. Tommy Killer, Northern Virginia Daily. Uh, can you talk a little bit about William and Mary's defense and what are some of the things that kind of stand out about them? That's the ball. Well, I think that, uh, you know, they're not, they're not going to be quite as big as what we faced last year against Delaware, but I think they're much more athletic. You know, really, and I equated uh, with our kids, they remind me a lot of Maine's defense in that uh, they got some guys that move really well. I think they got some long guys up front on the D-line. Uh, you know, they play very disciplined within their scheme. Uh, it's a very similar scheme to what we run. I think they're um, more athletic than what we saw last week in the secondary. Uh, and, you know, they've had, they've had some success this year in uh, keeping people out of the end zone, uh, even when they've kind of had their backs to the walls a couple times with some, uh, some field position issues because of turnovers. Uh, David Guzman, TV3 in Harrisonburg. Uh, Terrence Alls got his first career touchdown uh, on Saturday. How gratifying is that for you as a coach when you see that kind of moment happen, and how might that you know, maybe spark some other players, particularly the younger ones, into right. seeing, you know, that could happen, you know? Well, I think uh, it's a credit to Terrence. You know, he's... Uh, I talked about it yesterday a little bit. You know, he, start, he started off in uh, very poor shape when he first got to us in August. Just from, uh, you know, his, his focus was graduating from Duke University this summer so he could be with us. Uh, and I think he's worked his way uh, into the rotation, playing more and more every week and improving his play uh, with each and every week. Uh, you know, playing more, playing better. He got his first start Saturday and I think that uh, responded exactly the way you'd hoped he would. And I think that kind of validates the deal that, you know, if you work hard and do things right, good things are going to happen and you're going to be rewarded. Uh, and, you know, he helped our team immensely Saturday, you know, towards, towards the victory. With, with Terrence and even Connor to an extent, you've had success already with, with transfers. What's kind of your overall philosophy as far as bringing in transfers and integrating them into the program? I'm sorry, what was the first part of that again? Uh, Terrence and, and Connor have been successful yeah. transfers, at least early on. Uh, what's your kind of philosophy about integrating transfers into the program? I think the biggest thing is, I think, number one, you got to investigate why they're transferring, you know, uh, because that's, that's really the key right there because you want to make sure we've got a good locker room. We've got really good kids in our program. You know, we don't have, we don't have a, a deal where I, I, I dread coaching, you know, a certain kid on a day-to-day -day basis. I really enjoy our young men. I don't worry about, you know, how they're going to act off the field. I don't worry about how they're going to act around my kids or, or, or anyone else. Uh, and so I want to keep that. So I'm going to be very cautious with what kind of people I bring into that locker room. And so I think the big thing is investigating why they're transferring, because they're going to transfer for a reason. Uh, and if it's off the field character kind of deals, then you really got to investigate that and make sure you understand what happened. Uh, you know, some people make mistakes. 
but uh, is that a pattern of behavior? Or is it a one-time deal? Uh, if it's because they're not playing, then you better make sure that they can play for you. You know, because you know it, a, a player that can't play at one place, you know, may not be able to play at another, even though it's a, a lower division. So I think that's the big thing: is just doing your homework, bringing in people that fit uh, your roster uh, and fit your beliefs and the way you do things. And I think we, you know, we did very well with those young men there, uh, because I think any time you sit and talk to either one of those that you mentioned, Terrence or Connor, I mean, they are just like the rest of our kids and in, in, in the kind of people they are. Coach, you talked last week about staying on schedule, which means yeah. being productive on first and second down. You varied your tempo a little bit, especially as the game went on. You right. went high tempo somewhat. You were very effective on first and second down this past week, only a few third downs and a few third and longs. How did the tempo aid you in staying on schedule? Well, the big thing we wanted to try to do with the tempo was, we, you know, obviously Delaware you know, has this huge front seven. I mean, there's you know, some big kids. Uh, but we did feel like that if we could keep them on the field, uh, keep Delaware from subbing, uh, and then try to get those guys running around a lot, that uh, we could fatigue them fairly early in the ball game. So, uh, you know, I thought the, temp the one thing is if we don't sub, they can't sub if we're going fast. And so the tempo did keep some of their D linemen on the field longer probably than they wanted them to be out there. Uh, and then with some of the screen game stuff we were throwing, plus having to defend, uh, you know, a, a eight-yard run, and all of a sudden we're on the line of scrimmage again. Uh, I thought that was effective in wearing down uh, their front seven there in the first half, and probably led to a couple of the big plays. Can you talk a little about uh, about Wayman Mayer's running game and some of the challenges that kind of presents for your defense? Well, I think the big the big thing about Wayman Mayer's running game is Kendall Anderson. Uh, you know, I think he I said it yesterday on the teleconference. I think he's one of the the top skill players in our conference. You know, preseason all conference. Uh, coming into the season, uh, all CAA last year. Uh, I know he missed a little bit of time with injury early in this season, but obviously he's back full speed now, rush, running for right at 170 on a very good New Hampshire defense last week. Uh, and so I think, you know, he's, he's really the, the focal point right there. But just like with us, I mean, you look at their offensive line, they start four seniors and a junior. So, you know, they have a veteran group. Three of them were all CAA last year. So it's a, a veteran group of proven quality uh, guys up front, and so uh, and that's really the key to any running back being able to have the room to run. Coach, you mentioned the uh, third largest crowd at Bridgeforth on Saturday. How much do you emphasize to your team playing for for the fans, and, and how much do you think your team really feeds off of that energy? Well, I obviously think it's a positive any time that our fans can play in front of an enthusiastic home crowd. I think it helps them. Uh, the biggest thing I tell them is just to en enjoy the support, appreciate the support. You know, because we are blessed to have a, a pretty rabid fan base. And, uh, you know, I think, I think our, our kids do in, uh, appreciate very much that we have that kind of following. And I think they do enjoy, uh, you know, playing in front of our fans. And I, and I think that they do feed off of that. So I think it's a big factor. Coach William and Mary will use a fullback some, which is something you've yep. not seen a lot. How, if any, does that change kind of what you're doing defensively? What challenges does that present when he's on the field? Well, I mean, fortunately, the last two weeks we've seen a little bit of that from Maine and, uh, and Delaware. And, you know, their guys are really a lot like us with Clue in that it's, uh, it's kind of a hybrid tight end. And they've got a couple of them. I think they've played as many as three tight ends at once. Uh, Kaskin is the, you know, the one that has, uh, you know, the most notoriety being all CAA last year. But uh, those guys do a good job, uh, you know, inserting into the line of scrimmage. They do a good job, you know, cutting off backside on a lot of the zone run plays. So the big thing we've got to do is we've got to be able to match the numbers in the box, uh, be able to have the extra hitter there at the point of attack, and, uh, and it's something we've really got to work, uh, work hard on this week. Coach, a question from Facebook. This is uh, Jimmy Flick. He wants to know, uh, do you plan on using Trey Sharp and Taylor Woods a little bit more to maybe take a little wear and tear away from Abdullah or Carden Johnson? How, is, how will you use the four running backs? Well, I think uh, the big thing is those four guys, they all play a good bit. And... Uh, you know, Trey and Taylor may play more on special teams than they do on, uh, on offense, but uh, we don't hesitate at any point in time to use those guys. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, I mean, I think we have two of the top running backs in the country. And so, uh, you know, we're going to use them anytime we have the opportunity to. And if, uh, if we need to bring Trey or, or Taylor in uh, at any point in time, we won't hesitate to do so. Speaking of special teams, we've seen Robbie Walker back there a little bit. He's relatively unknown for a lot of folks. Can I catch us up on him, if you will? 
Do what? On Robbie, who's been returning, back there return kicks. Yeah. You know, Robbie came to us this, uh, this past spring, uh, transferred in from Ohio, uh, and just really a, a great young man. Uh, you know, has kind of found his niche with us right now in kickoff return. Uh, he's a bigger, stronger kid. That uh, he did, he did the same thing at Ohio. Uh, you know, fairly fearless back there, which it takes a little bit of on kickoff return because you got to hit it 100 miles an hour and and have faith that the hole's going to be there a lot of times. But uh, he's doing a good job for us there, and he's also uh, you know helping us out on the punt returns, a front line guy. And I would imagine you're going to see him on some other special teams as well. Anything else from members of the media? All right. Okay. Thanks That'll a lot do for it. being here. Go Dukes. Dukes and the Tribe of William & Mary. It's a 3.30 kickoff this coming Saturday at Bridge Forest Stadium. And we do appreciate you coming out once again here to O'Neill's Grill for our weekly fan and press lunch. We'll be back again next Tuesday starting at noon.